More than two dozen survivors of Pearl Harbor and other veterans remember the 2,403 service members and civilians who lost their lives during the attack 80 years ago today. The ceremony included a Hawaiian blessing, a performance by the U.S. Pacific Fleet Band, and a special message recorded by President Joe Biden. It began with a moment of silence just before 8 o'clock this morning commemorating the start of the attack. Because it wasn't just the fleet that was attacked here at Pearl Harbor. It wasn't even just our nation. It was the very future of freedom and democracy around the world. No one understands the value of those words. More than someone born in a land where neither freedom nor democracy exists. Tomorrow, the Navy will commission a destroyer, the USS Daniel Inouye, honoring the Army Lieutenant who represented Hawaii in the U.S. Senate from 1963 until his death in December of 2012. Memories of the attack on Pearl Harbor are permanently etched in the minds of those who witnessed the devastation. KITV force Kristen Concilio reports on her own family, whose simple lives in the islands were forever changed. Just after breakfast on a Sunday morning, 80 years ago today, my grandfather, Solomon Kapa Niao, heard the abrupt roar of bombers blazing past his home on the Pearl City Peninsula. So we ran outside and I started waving to, you know, we thought it was Manu, Manu was, if it's so low, I can even see the pilot inside there, and the cockpit. That's when a police officer stopped by, alerting the family that it was a surprise attack by the Japanese. My great-grandfather, at the time a police officer at the Pearl City substation, took the family up Waimano Home Road to hide in the cane fields, while he took off to aid in the disaster that was unfolding. The family had a clear view of Pearl Harbor. When the uh, airplane catch fire, turned around and plowed right to one of the ships too. We didn't know what was going on actually. Little did my grandfather know he was witnessing one of the most significant moments in history, December 7, 1941, an event that would thrust America into World War II. Following the attack, the military imposed martial law. At 12 years old, my grandfather was ordered to work as a block warden, knocking on neighbors' doors to make sure they blacked out their windows and turned off their lights by sunset. I couldn't uh, be uh, out on the streets at certain times. Military take over. So even when you, 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 you kind of go home, everything was rationed. We had to wear a uh, gas mask to go to school. After the war, the military took over his hometown just blocks away from Pearl Harbor, forcing his family of six to give up their home. They didn't tell you how much you wanted for your house. They just thought, you know, it's worth it's what they give you. I think it was $6,200 that they gave us for our house, a lot. That's all. Take it or leave it, huh? My grandfather still has vivid memories of that fateful day that not only changed the world, but life as he knew it in his very own backyard. Kristen Concilio, KITV4 Island News. And we're so grateful for Kristen's grandfather for sharing that story and remembering everything so vividly there. Exactly. After all those years, mm -hmm. those memories are ingrained in his mind. Yep. yep. Well,